A wise PvPer once said, if it's easy, it's probably fun. At least that's how I coped with playing Resto Druid for the last 15 years. <clears throat> well, anyway, we are back again to tell you what classes are easy and which ones should be played by the sweatiest gamers. So sit back as we show you what you should be playing if you want the easiest solo queue experience in 9.2. And speaking of easy, the easiest place to rank up this season is skillcap.com slash wow. We offer a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while using our website. So don't let your rating prevent you from getting fully geared. Get the upgrades you've always wanted while constantly getting better at the game. Unlock your true potential by visiting skillcap.com slash wow. Before we get into our list, let's go over how we made our rankings. First things first, just because something is good doesn't always mean it's easy in solo queue. In fact, what sometimes makes a class good is how well it can precisely coordinate damage and CC with its partners, which of course is a hard ask in LFG. That's why sub rogues and fire mages can be really strong together in organized arena, but might not be the best choices for an easy solo experience, and we will explain that later. For now, just remember that some high tier DPS aren't actually that easy when it comes to being a soloist. With that out of the way, the criteria for being an easy DPS include the ability to deal lots of front loaded damage and being able to land kills without cross CC or even without needing to CC at all. Defensively, being easy means the ability to passively stay alive without much support from a dedicated healer. In solo arena, you generally want to be self-sustainable both on offense and defense, so having an easy path to victory while being able to stay alive with a scrub healer is really important. And speaking of healers, being easy means having lots of tools to avoid CC chains and even death itself, while also having enough throughput to prevent their partners from getting gimped in the early stages of the game, since solo queue and LFG games typically don't last very long. As long as it isn't too demanding to keep your team aggressive for at least one minute, you will generally have success. With that established, let's look at the easiest solo queue melee this season. Rhett Paladins take up our first spot, because of course they do. But seriously, they check all the boxes for easy DPS. The raw strength of Seraphim and Avenging Wrath continues to carry in Season 3, allowing Rhett Paladins to score kills without needing to cross CC. At its core, the front-loaded damage of a Rhett Paladin is what makes it so easy, as the majority of its threatening damage is tied to a single long-duration cooldown and just a few damage buttons, making it nearly impossible not to get value out of your offensive CDs. And now, since some Paladins are switching over to Necrolord, which has Fleshcraft combined with an auto-proc shield, the spec as a whole is seeing more passive survivability on top of its long list of utility options that can help carry weaker healers. Some people might argue that utility is what makes a class hard, but for Ret Paladins, a lot of their utility is completely reactionary. You don't need to guess when to use Blessing of Sanctuary, because the tooltip tells you exactly when to use it. Just look for a fear, stun, or silence on your healer, and press it as soon as possible. And that brings us to the next easy mode melee DPS, Survival Hunter. As we mentioned in our 9.2 tier list update, survival stocks have shot way up. A lot of this was due to double legendaries, with Venthyr Hunters having one of the best Covenant specific effects. Just like Rhett Paladins, their primary offensive cooldown has an incredibly long duration, and their main source of burst damage comes from killshot procs, which the game shouts at you to press, meaning it's really difficult to actually miss your damage. This is on top of a relatively straightforward win condition of trapping healers on CD. It is really difficult to mess up your traps on healers with Harpoon, and although there are some avoidance tools you need to play around, you can just make a weak aura to prevent trapping into any sort of immunity. Speaking of immunities, Fury Warriors seem to be immune to buffs for as long as we can remember, but nonetheless, they remain another easy option for solo queuing. Unlike ARMS, which has more defensive tasks with War Banner, Duel, and D Stance, Fury is pretty straightforward. Find a target and hit it. Of course, there can be some finesse in making sure you stay on your target, but generally speaking, the opponents you will find at solo queue ratings will be much worse at using their mobility options against you. Rounding out the easiest melee are Demon Hunters, who are proving to be one of the best solo queue classes going into Season 3. The swap over to Necrolord last season helped elevate their defensives, which was one of their core weaknesses early into the expansion. With Necro, they are effortlessly tankier while suffering virtually no loss to overall damage. And speaking of damage, maintaining optimal DPS is much easier for Demon Hunters compared to other melee, since they have some of the best mobility options in the game, meaning they can easily attack slippery targets. And since Metamorphosis has such a long duration, it's almost impossible not to get value out of your offensives, especially considering you have multiple instant cast stuns to lock down enemy targets. 
Moving on to our first moderately difficult melee DPS, Windwalker Monks are still a solid option for 9.2 solo queue. Despite some damage nerfs to Bone Dust Brew, the spec as a whole is retaining the majority of its scary damage and will still be able to close out games on its own, making for an easy solo queue experience on offense. One difficulty when learning Windwalker is its mastery, which prevents you from spamming the same damage globals. Another difficulty is defense, which is where Windwalker monks require a bit of finesse. Without much passive tankiness and with some of the weakest self-heals of any hybrid, monks need to be really good at kiting to stay alive, and especially can't allow themselves to constantly tank damage from enemy offensives whenever their healer is CC. The need to pre-use defensives or pre-kite enemy setups can make the spec harder for inexperienced players. The same general problem applies to Outlaw and Assassination Rogues. When left to fend for themselves, a lot of cooldown trading and kiting is needed to stay alive. Fortunately, their win condition is fairly straightforward, and is eventually met by just kidney shotting the kill target on DR. Okay, maybe it isn't that simple, but you get the gist. Their win condition is made slightly harder by the fact that both of these specs have a lot of maintenance with their DPS rotation, and generally require a lot of uptime to have optimal damage. As a rogues need to maintain three separate dots on one or more targets all game, while Outlaw needs to keep Enduring Brawler up and pay attention to important Roll the Bones procs to get maximum value out of the spec's cooldown reduction. Both of these things require global maintenance and high uptime, which of course is much harder when they are already pretty squishy. And speaking of being squishy, Warriors lost a bit of their tankiness this patch with a nerf to defensive stance. This certainly hurts their own survivability, but their utility options remain entirely intact, which means they can still carry the game defensively when they are not a target. There's a bit of a learning curve knowing when to peel as a Warrior, but with so many peeling options, it's a bit hard to mess up. On the offensive end, Warriors have a pretty simple task, and Spear of Bastion makes kill setups fairly easy since it keeps enemy targets in one place. And with one of the lowest maintenance DPS rotations and having very few damage buttons, <coughs> three of them, Warriors should continue to have no problem dealing high DPS this season. Moving along, Enhancement Shamans are looking increasingly strong this season, and in many ways, we might have undervalued them on our original Solo Shuffle tier list. 9.2 introduced tons of quality of life improvements on the defensive end, with mana reductions on key offensive spells, which overall will help Enhancement Shaman off healing and utility, which is where the majority of their difficulty lies. With Grounding Totem, Tremor, and Wind Shears to micromanage, Enhance has a bit more to pay attention to defensively compared to other melee, but their offense is relatively straightforward and Doom Winds combined with Ascendance is more than enough damage to close out games alone without needing to worry about cross CC. Rounding out our cast of moderately difficult melee DPS are Death Knights. I am sure we are about to get a bunch of comments from Warriors saying they can't believe DK is on the same level of difficulty, but hear us out. Although they have significantly less utility, they require a bit of attention offensively. Frost relies heavily on support from its teammates in order to get full value out of its grip stun combo, and Unholy is a bit more global maintenance and can't really finish off games alone. This can make solo queuing a bit more difficult compared to other melee DPS that can just blast through enemy CDs with virtually no setup, so just keep that in mind when playing DK as a soloist. And that brings us to the hardest solo queue classes to play, starting with Sub Rogue. Look, everyone knows Rogue Mage is probably the best comp of all time, and that definitely isn't changing anytime soon. But just because one spec has one really good comp doesn't necessarily mean it's built for a soloist. Outside of RMP, Sub Rogues don't have many comp options, and their toolkit is entirely designed to elevate other classes, and by that we mean the Fire Mage that is carrying them. Unless you and your solo partners have a really good understanding of precise coordinated CC, you won't be able to do much as a sub rogue because your damage and control doesn't do anything on its own. Combine that with the fact that they can easily die in stuns unless well supported, and overall that means a lot of pre-kiting and pre-vanishing is needed to live when Trinket is down. And that brings us to Feral Druid. Obviously, Feral Druids are good, and they have one of the most unique toolkits of any melee DPS. With multiple dots and damage globals to manage, plenty of CC options, and a lot of different healing tools, Feral has a lot of things to manage already in Arena. So when you try and combine that with the chaos of the solo experience, it can be really overwhelming to deal with unless you really know what you're doing. One key weakness of any Druid spec is its vulnerability to mind games, which usually requires teams to stop the cast if the Feral wants to keep one of its nine lives. And with the nerf to Frenzied Regeneration in 9.2, Ferals will have to try much harder to live on their own. And with our melee wrapped up, let's move on to ranking our ranged DPS. Both ranged Hunter specs take our first slot in the easy category. Their strengths are a bit different. 
BM does consistently high DPS all game and can usually end arenas with pure attrition, which can be done with a really easy DPS rotation of spamming Cobra Shot and pressing Kill Shot during procs. Marks, on the other hand, has the ability to absolutely obliterate someone with pure burst damage by stacking True Shot, Double Tap, and Resonating Arrow. And both of these playstyles typically work really well in solo queue, where healers are usually worse at dealing with raw pressure. And again, CC requirements are pretty straightforward. Just dodge the healer's avoidance tools and try and trap off DR. But sometimes that isn't needed at all when Marks Hunters can just do this to healers instead. Finishing off our easy range DPS are Balanced Druids. Now, you might be wondering, wait, wasn't Feral considered hard? How could balance be that much easier? Well, for one, Boomkins have one of the most straightforward win conditions, with Root Beam being one of the most reliable CC options into healers. And when more control is needed, Owl can Frenzy procs make it insanely easy to land on-demand clones. Of course, the nerf to the Kyrian Legendary and Frenzied Regeneration will make balance slightly weaker, but with the ability to play Renewal and with a larger radius on Incapacitating Roar, Balanced Druids have slightly better tools for coping defensively in solo queue. Moving along to our moderately difficult range DPS, we have two hybrids, starting with Elemental Shaman. One of the previous difficulties playing Ellie was that people could just constantly line their damage, making it harder to actually land kills. On top of that, their defensives are fairly limited into control-heavy comps like RMP. 9.2 has introduced some quality of life improvements to help on the damage side of things, with their 4-piece granting them almost 100% uptime on their pet, meaning they will have a much easier time doing damage in chaotic solo environments. Of course, there is still a moderate difficulty curve involved with utilizing all of their utility, and their off heals are slightly weaker than other hybrids, so some finesse is needed when playing without communication. Shadow Priests are in the same boat, so to speak. Of course, the nerf to Pallid Command will hurt some of their damage, but their toolkit as a whole remains intact. Talents like Unfurling Darkness, Misery, and Damnation can make it easier to deal damage while under pressure, and Shadow Priests will typically get more value out of talents like Psyfiend at solo queue ratings, where opponents are less likely to kill it. Just like Ellie, you still have some utility to manage, but that is easier than in the past due to the strength of improved mass to spell. Of course, it was nerfed in 9.2, but it remains a strong option for carrying the game defensively when playing alone. The true difficulty of Shadow Priest when solo queuing is knowing how to properly rotate defensives. Greater Fade and Dispersion are quite strong, but they need to be used carefully as to not overlap with important healer defensives. And that brings us to our first ranged DPS in the hard category, Warlocks. We could have ranked each spec by itself, but the same general problem applies to the class as a whole. Defensively, Warlocks are in a tight position, where they really require a good healer to get full value out of Dark Pact, since you get a stronger shield when it's used at high HP. This is on top of a class-specific issue of actually needing to hardcast most of their damage. Altogether, this can make for a really difficult solo queue experience, unless your teammates really know how to support you. Which brings us to our final ranged DPS, Mages. Obviously, Fire is arguably the strongest DPS in the game, but that doesn't mean it's easy in solo queue. The strength of your toolkit scales directly with how good your partners are. It doesn't matter how consistent you can land polymorphs on healers if you don't have a DPS to reliably lock down kill targets. Of all three specs, Fire is definitely the most forgiving and is far and away one of the tankiest specs in the game, especially considering that mages might be shifting away from Shimmer in 9.2 in favor of Blazing Soul in key matchups. But despite this meta adjustment, the class as a whole needs someone to consistently lock down kill targets, or else none of your CC or damage actually matters. And finally, let's break down the solo queue healer meta in 9.2, starting with the easiest picks. Resto Druid should be an obvious contender for our first slot, but it requires one distinction. The spec as a whole does have quite a bit of global maintenance, but the majority of its healing is tied into refreshing Scenarian Ward as often as possible. As long as you can do this consistently, the healing isn't that difficult to manage. Generally speaking, Resto Druids do best in Shadowlands when they play passively, and with multiple CC avoidance tools, it is much easier to avoid getting controlled compared to other healers. 9.2 hasn't changed Resto by much, and we expect the passive, healing-focused playstyle to continue being strong both in Raided Arena and in Solo Cube. Following that up, we have a healer on the opposite end of the spectrum. Holy Priest will take the next slot as an easy healer, since their toolkit is really strong in short, bursty games. Both Chastise and Serenity are perfect fits for Solo Queue, where games are often over within a minute. And with the ability to reset their cooldowns with Apotheosis, coupled with the new tier set bonuses, Holy Priests will have even more instant cast healing and control to dictate the pace of the game. When you combine all of this with an increasingly popular Res Legendary, Holy Priest is almost a failsafe option. Just keep in mind that it typically works best in setup-based comps, especially with Fire Mages. 
And speaking of working well with fire mages, holy paladins round out our list for easy healers in 9.2. Just like holy priests, paladins are an aggressive healer, with a toolkit perfectly designed to keep their team pushed in offensively. This patch, most Holy Paladins will be switching over to Necrolord since it gives them more instant cast healing in tandem with Vanquisher's Hammer and its respective Legendary. This overall will be a massive quality of life improvement as Paladins have been a bit gated by throughput and mana in the Shadowlands meta. So with more instant cast healing and tons of failsafe tools, we expect Holy Paladin to be on the easier end of solo queue healers. Moving along, we have our moderately difficult solo healers, starting with Disciplined Priest. People seem to be hyping up the damage for Disc in 9.2, and of course, it looks really good on paper. But you have to remember that theory crafting doesn't always translate well into actual gameplay. And Disc Priest really requires a specific playstyle from their partners, as they tend to do best in attrition-based setups where raw damage eventually wins the game. Solo queue environments don't always provide that, and without hybrid support, Disc often struggles to realize its full potential as the attrition kings. Resto shamans are in a similar position, and typically need the support from either a warrior or shadow priest to really shine in arena. Unfortunately, both arms and shadow was nerfed in the patch, so shamans might be noticeably weaker overall. This means more attention is needed defensively, and more often than not, you will need to preemptively astral shift stuns to avoid getting gibbed in LFG. One thing they have as an advantage is their offensive power in the first minute of the game, where the Earth LE Legendary can help carry their team offensively. And for those wanting to experiment a bit, the Kyrian Vesper Totem Legendary is pretty nasty and gives Resto even more kill power to close out games within the first minute. And unfortunately, we are left with the hardest healer on our list, Mistweaver Monk. Generally speaking, monks are the most awkward healer of the expansion, and everything they can do, every healer can do better. Resto Druids are better at healing, Holy Priests have better control, and Resto Shamans have way more damage. So the question remains, why would you play with a monk? This is especially true in solo queue environments, where their weaknesses are just amplified by the chaotic environment it brings. Although talents like Eminence make it easier to survive alone, monks are still incredibly squishy when stunned on top of their port or while it's on cooldown. All in all, monks aren't really equipped to handle solo queue and typically need the support of double casters or bulky melee to really shine in the Shadowlands meta. And just to recap, this is our full breakdown of how easy classes will be in 9.2 solo queue. Once again, just because something ranks high in our tier list doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to play in solo environments. Some specs rely heavily on their partners to carry, and they can't really do much on their own, so just keep that in mind when you're trying to have a good solo experience. But we want to know from you, what is your definition of easy in WoW PvP? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want the best experience possible this season, consider checking out skillcap.com slash WoW. If you don't gain at least 250 rating while using our website, we refund you. Simple as that. With over 700 guides and more on the way for Season 3, Skillcapped is a one-stop shop for making sure you get the rating you've always wanted. So don't get crushed by the solo queue grind and get equipped to dominate the competition this season. Visit skillcapped.com slash wow to learn more. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. We hope you learned something useful. And as always, thanks for watching. See you soon.